Hello, my name is Jonas Turbonski. No. Hello, my name is Sven Motorworkin. Hello, I am Dr. Martin von Redblocken. Yeah. And today we're going to be working on the front end and suspension bits on our 1987 Volvo 740 Turbo. We're going to get the car up on some jack stands, get those wheels off, and we will get started. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the stuff we're going to be doing today. Um, we are going to do the, well, I'm going to call it the holy quadrangle of front steering bits on red blocks and I had done my very best to set up the camera where you can see most things uh, but not everything. Uh, we have got the outer tie rod ends here. We have got the ball joints down low. I'm not sure if you can see those. We have got the uh, end links for our sway bar and then we have got the strut rod bushings. The strut rods, I don't know if you can see, but they actually go back and have another bushing in the back. The rear bushing doesn't tend to fail as much. Uh, you can buy the entire strut rod if you want. Um, you can also obviously buy inner tie rods, which are actually the bar that goes into the steering rack. Um, when I take off the outer, I'll see if I can feel any play, and then we'll go on from there. So basically, I'll show you some pictures of what some of this stuff looks like kind of up close, just to make things a little bit more visible. Uh, you'll notice there's sort of like a, I don't know, like an aged uh, wrinkling on a lot of these pieces, and it isn't actually corrosion for most of it. Um, it's almost like somebody sprayed some undercoating on this car many years ago, and it's just become old. Um, it looks like rust proofing. I don't know. It's almost like somebody spread peanut butter on it, and then it hardened into granite. But hopefully I can still get this uh, outer tie rod end in place. Um, I am not doing shocks at this time. The car may need them someday, but we're just going to do this stuff for now because it definitely needs it. And this is part of my stage zero, getting the car up to date on maintenance. And I want to do all these things at once. Um, one of the things I will mention is if you don't have one, I strongly recommend a uh, ball joint separator. I use these on ball joints as well as on tie rod ends. I see a lot of people hit these things with hammers to get them loose and that's fine. It does work, but I personally would rather use one of these because uh, you basically screw the bolt in through it and then it tightens the spread here and it pops it out using force. Um, I just tend to have better luck with using a ball joint separator um, instead of having to swing a hammer. So away we go. Golly, this looks like it's a 22. Success. Okay, got this one loose as well. Ah, all right, I forgot that these tie rod ends sometimes like to spin with the shaft. I'm curious to see how much of my face is gonna be in this video. So I'm holding the top of the shaft with an eight millimeter wrench and then I'm turning the nut with the 19. All right, well, we hit that with some PB blaster. Let's move on to our ball joint. Don't think I've ever used a sledgehammer to remove a cotter pin, but you know, I'm not gonna get up and go all the way back into the garage. Hooray! That's a good little ball joint separator. Okay, now the, uh, the sway bar end link top nut is a 17. I went ahead and took the other side loose so that I should be able to rotate the sway bar up easily after I remove this one. 
Okay. Up with the sway bar. More hammering. All right, the sway bar is okay. These are actually IPD sway bars and they're old school ones. They are the old gold ones before IPD started making them into blue colors. Hooray! Okay, moving on to the strut rod. I'm gonna go ahead and use an impact on the rear nut. Looks like it's a 22. Here we go. Oh man, there's a nut on the other side. I only did half the battle. It's coming. <clears throat> okay. So some of you experienced red block mechanics might be laughing at me because I couldn't loosen the bolt at the end of the strut rod because I was a cotton-handed ninny muggins and I took the bolt out of the other end of the strut rod. Once you take that bolt out, you kind of lose your leverage and when you turn on this bolt here at the front end it just kind of twists the whole strut rod so anyways i just put the bolt back in and i was able to loosen this one and there we go now it's my understanding that you want to keep track of which side of this went up when you took it off because these go in at a certain angle so do not lose track of that now I'm going to take off the bottoms of the ball joints. Okay. <clears throat> Hooray! I'm starting to wonder if these bolts have ever been off because this undercoating is all over them. All right, there's what's left of a ball joint. Uh, cool. Glad we got new ones. Well, I put a little PB blaster on the threads. And we didn't even have to get out the torch. We're running low on light here, but we'll try to get done as much as we can. I could try the old hammer method, since it's a little easier to get to tie rods than it is to ball joints so there you go sometimes you use one method sometimes you use another it's starting to come back to me so the nut is a 22 and the tie rod end is a 21 oops i think i bumped my camera <clears throat> yay it came loose Yes, as I was saying, you are gonna need an alignment after this. I'm doing a hobo alignment to start with, which means I'm gonna to try to put my new tie rods back where my old ones were, and then I will take it to a shop who can do an alignment, but the whole idea is just to get the alignment close enough that you can drive it. Okay, so there you go. Everything's off. I'm going to start putting things on. We're running out of light. I'm not sure how much I'll get to show you, um, but we will try. Welcome back. We are on the other side of the car on a different day. Definitely ran out of light the other day, so tried to replicate pretty much as far as I went on the other side. I've taken everything off here and we are pretty much ready to start reassembling. Only thing I wanted to point out was there's a way you need to go ahead and remove the two halves of this bushing for the strut rod. And the new one that we have is one single metal sleeve that goes all the way through, but the originals are actually two different halves. Or a pick tool, we'll start with a pick tool down in there, in between the two. Oh, that was actually really easy. So now you can see that this is one half. Um, they have a certain shape to them. Obviously the conical part goes into the hole itself, but just wanted to show that to you. Now we are ready to assemble. 
so we can sort of do that in reverse order. Show you the pieces and bits that I got from good old IPD. This is your strut rod bushing. Splits into two halves. Comes with a special bolt that's longer than the original one. So you put your two halves in. Your bolt will go through on this end. You actually have to get the original rod itself as well as leaving that original washer on. You can't remove it because it's part of the metal. Again, I said this on the other side, but make sure you keep track of which side is which because you don't want to put this in upside down. Oh. Pay no attention to me for getting to take off old ball joint. All right, before I get too carried away on that strut rod, I'm gonna go ahead and do the ball joint. control arm is under tension so it can be a little tricky just be careful don't pinch your fingers there we go you're using German torque on this car in case you haven't heard of it before it's guten tight a silly old joke I learned many years ago all right ball joint is on and now we can move on to this tie rod end, which is already loose. Using Lem Forder outer tie rod ends. Same thing as the ball joint. If the center shaft starts to spin, you need to put a wrench on it. You don't want that thing to just turn all the way into oblivion because it'll never get tight. Motorbike. Now these tie rod ends don't use the wrench over the stud technique. They use the Allen wrench technique, which I prefer because I think it is safer. Well, I definitely did that out of order. Whoops. What I should have done was left the ball joint off. That would have given me more play on the strut rod. But we muscled it home. No big deal. Well, if you're screaming at me in the video for leaving parts out, don't worry. I got the message. I knew something wasn't right. Forgot my big old washer. This is one part you do reuse. You don't reuse the bolt, because I have this longer one, right? But you do reuse the washer. Don't worry, I remembered it on the other side. Smart Joel would have left that part here on the ground, so I wouldn't forget it, but no harm done. So we're done with our strut rod bushing. We're done with our strut rod bolt on the back. Everything's tight. We've got our ball joint in. Ball joint has a cotter pin. All those bolts are tight. The tie rod end is on. It is tight. All that's left is our last sway bar end link. Okay. So here's your sway bar end link. And we're using the old bolt. This was originally in place here, which is needed because they don't give you a new one in the kit. No big deal. Now for the sway bar end link, you've got a washer that goes on. Make sure it's sort of like cupped. The cup should be facing up. And then this actual bushing has a part that has like a little protruding cutout versus the other side that's flat. You want the protruding cutout to go up because that's gonna go into the actual sway bar hole itself. Now this can be a little tricky because you need this to go down on both sides. So I have to go to the other side of the car and see if it's working. All right, so the other side is good. You pretty much know when it's on there because you can't really get it wrong. You want to try to get the little lip of the bushing down in there if you can. 
Okay, those are nice and snug. And I don't want to forget to tighten the lower. Right, I look, kept these a little bit loose while I got everything lined up. And now they can be tight. Well, that is it. All that is left is to go ahead and put the wheels and tires back on the car, take it for an alignment, and we've got a fresh and dandy front end on our Volvo 740 Turbo. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully we will see you in the next video for some more Volvo content. Cheerio! Thank you.